This is a message to all my fellow Kiwis who will be voting in the 2023 election in October of this year. And it's a message for everybody who loves this country and loves what this country has offered us in the past and could offer us in the future. I want you to imagine for a moment a country where there's very little state interference in your life, where you and your family can get on, where you have plenty of money in your pocket because the government tax take has been pulled right back so that the middle class machinery in New Zealand that can really fire up after the lockdowns is now f in full flow, in full force. And there are lots of little mum and dad businesses once again thriving in this country. A country where we look after our beautiful land and waters. We take all the fluoride out of our water that we drink, which is now being shown over and over in reports to drop childhood IQ by up to seven to nine points. All that fluoride is gone, the 1080 is gone, there are little health hospitals, little cottage hospitals all around the country, very welcoming, very gentle, no mandates, no masks, no bullying, very honourable doctors, very honourable nurses, all re-employed, and a wonderful revamped school system for our children that doesn't cause confusion with all the gender programming that this government is pushing in. Imagine a country where you could create whatever your imagination and your community want because power has gone back to the communities. Power has been returned to the people. You can pick up the phone and ring up your local mayor or local councillor and they know they have to take those calls. They're in a position to serve their communities. There's very little power in the central government anymore. And so when somebody like a, let's say, a Bill Gates from overseas, with all his billions and millions of the Gates Foundation, lands in New Zealand to tell what he thinks might be still a central government what he wants in our country, he suddenly finds it really difficult because there isn't one central body who will take his money. He's going to have to go around about 50 little communities in New Zealand and persuade each one, one by one, that corruption with that money is worth it. But people aren't buying it anymore in New Zealand. They're saying, no, we had those dark days. We had them from the Labour government, the Greens. We saw how national stayed silent. We watched as David Seymour said nothing. And we didn't vote for them anymore. We turned it over. We turned power back to a group of really good Kiwis who want to serve their country, our country. I'm Liz Gunn, and that is what I'm offering today. Nearly two years ago, spontaneously, I did my first love letter to my fellow Kiwis. I did it because I love this country. I did it because my father who fought for this country in World War II was at my shoulder saying, stand up girl, speak out. Don't be one of the silent ones, don't go along. I saw it, his voice said to me, I saw it in Hitler's Germany, the number of people who just stayed silent when they saw wrongdoing. He was in Germany just before the war. He was cycling through and a Jewish woman he stayed in her house, a Jewish woman came in and begged him and his mate, and they were on bikes, begged them to somehow smuggle her out of Germany. They had no means to. And when he went back to England after that trip, he enlisted for England because New Zealand had not yet signed up to World War II. And he said to me many times in his later life, I never wanted to fight. I've told you this before in my love letters. He said, I never wanted to fight. But I did it so that you, Liz, would be free and your children and their children and their children. Free of corruption, free of petty tyrants, free of mendacious, cruel, uncaring leaders who wouldn't look after our country. And yet New Zealand, we've had all of that and much more. <sighs> Seeing this little Chris Hipkins, leader. I can't see him as a leader. He looks like a little boy. He should be in short shorts with long socks. 
He just looks out of his depth, but he's sitting in front of the World Economic Forum sign. The World Economic Forum, which any of you and many millions of Kiwis have done this now, any of you who've done your research, will have put together that the World Economic Forum is really the enforcement arm of the United Nations. The great United Nations, well, great it once was, but no more, it too has been taken over, as has the World Health Organization, whose primary funder is the Gates Foundation. Gates, who made billions out of the rollout of the jabs. And there are whole questions there. We all know now people who have died suddenly and questions should be asked. For saying that alone, the little glove puppets in our mainstream media, our sold out mainstream media in New Zealand, have been paid now for years by the government. The glove puppet I used to sit next to, Simon Dello, will Will, will pompously pronounce me as conspiracy theorist Liz Gunn if he ever does another story on me. Well, Simon and all the rest of you, it's a compliment now to be called a conspiracy theorist in New Zealand. It means that all of us had the critical thinking skills combined with the inordinate courage to maintain the willingness to ask questions, to seek out stories that were being hidden by the government, to share with one another, sometimes covertly because of the massive Labour government censorship, to share the things we were finding and to keep doing it every day, as discouraging as it was at times, as broken as we felt at times. So to be a conspiracy theorist, to be an anti-vaxxer means we ask questions and we all need to ask questions now. There are many who felt forced, coerced into taking that jab, who now regret it very much. And you too are our brothers and our sisters. We are all in this together now. Unity is important, but not tawdry political unity at any cost, with bullying and coercion there either. Unity where you join me out of freedom of choice. I'm not interested in any groups that berate me because I'm not making sure that everybody comes in with me who wants to be a leader. I have people who I'm going to ask to join the group that I'm telling you about today. They're modest people. They don't want to stand for politics any more than I do. And paradoxically, that's what's needed now. We can't have people who want to get into politics in 2023 for their own naked ambition, for their brand building, for their power grabs, for their egos. I don't want to work with any star people, no. I want to work with real Kiwis, humble, caring, sometimes traumatized, but through that very strong and very, like me, determined, Kiwis. But here's the rub. If I form this political party, and I already have a name and a motto, which I'll tell you about at the end, a byline, I love it. If I form this, I can do it only with a mass of real Kiwis behind me, with me actually, side by side. I need you to form this party within one week to show me that you will value what I am offering. We need 500 people signing up to the website, which we will put below, 500. If we can't raise that in one week from the desperation that's abroad, I was in a cafe the other day and three conversations around me were, who are you going to vote for politically? Who'll stand for our rights? The government sold us out. I heard those conversations. Well, if I can't raise 500 people, to be able to register this party within one week, then I will absolutely take that as a no from the country. I intend to, to start off as I, as I want to continue. And how do I want to continue? I want to do politics in full consultation with the people of New Zealand. Many of us can't even use the word kind after it was so abused by the last Prime Minister and the word transparency, she said that, didn't she, will be the most transparent government ever. And she was the head of the most opaque government. Opaque, we could never tell what she was up to. And look at Hipkins now in the World Economic Forum. 
when? When did we give our imprimatur, our approval, that he could go off there and represent us? Why don't these politicians come and ask us? Christopher Luxon was on Radio New Zealand this morning, seriously talking about his flying there and alluding to the fact that in future years he does hope that they'll have what he called a VIP plane. <laughs> the irony of it didn't even hit him. This is a VIP, <laughs> it's, it's clown world, a VIP plane to fly to a conference, which they could do online, to tell us not to use our cars, not to go flying, not to live outside 15-minute cities. He wants his own plane to fly to future Davos meetings. And the fact that this little man, Christopher Luxon, a rather pathetic little creature who's heading national, the fact that he just so casually alluded to himself and sees himself as a VIP would be laughable in any other era. Christopher Luxon, little David Seymour, little Chris Hipkins, and the head of the Greens, I can't remember who they are. Oh yeah, that Marama woman, the one who said all white males are abusers. Yeah, totally forgettable. But the lot of you, none of you should be in after this election. Not one of you should be voted back, back in. But I can tell you this, none of you is a VIP. That means a very important person. No, you're a servant. You're a servant. You're there to serve the people who are supposed to vote you in. And that role I will take really seriously and so will the people that I ask to join me. Some people have said, oh Liz, in your media that you started off two years ago, free NZ media, and I'd love you to have a look on our Substack and join up there. Please do, we've put out a really important article backgrounding the whole World Economic Forum and how it's come to be. Just, just put that out today. But people have said, have said to me, you know, sometimes in your media you're too emotional. I did that on purpose because we were telling stories of peoples whose lives were totally broken because of this government and its policies in the last three years. And I, as someone with legal training and journalism training, I for one was not willing to look away. No, I did the opposite. I did what all good journalists should do, which is I went hunting for the stories that this government is hiding. I remember interviewing 23-year-old Casey Hodgkinson early on. Very quickly it went to 260,000 views and suddenly the count stopped and we realised we were being shadow banned. Shadow banned everywhere by this government and its American allies. We have so much yet to find out about what they've done behind our backs. But I remember when I was talking to this beautiful young 23-year-old being so brave about her injuries, I thought, oh, this will stop it all in its tracks. It hasn't. But I will tell you this, anybody who could have sat opposite Casey would also have cried at what has happened to a young life so brutally and unnecessarily struck down. But the time for that has passed now. It's time now for us to envisage the future we together can create. But we do, as much as people say, I don't want to be part of politics, I don't believe in politics, I don't believe in politicians, I don't either. Together though, we have to create some potential to divest the power from the central body in parliament. And to do that, we need a group of ethical, strong-minded, willing servants of the people to stand in this election. Above all, you need to be loyal to your family, loyal to your community, and loyal to the real New Zealand. And that is why the party name is New Zealand Loyal. We'll put it up as loyal for short, but it is New Zealand Loyal. And the moniker is NZL, as it was for the America's Cup. And that's significant, because I think the audacity of Kiwis is still alive. It may be under the surface, but we are an audacious nation when we come together. How was it that a Kiwi was the first up Mount Everest? How was the audacity and the bravery of our Māori battalion in World War II that my father revered? 
our beautiful Māori, who, who have been equally exploited by the Māori elite who are exploiting you, the brown mafia as they're called. We're all being manipulated, we're all being divided by this government, but we can go past them. We can ignore their little games, we can ignore the World Economic Forum, we can tell our leadership we don't want you going off there. How about we withdraw from the World Economic Forum? How about we withdraw from the World Health Organization and their threatened next pandemic treaty and we look at many options for our health, including jabs if you want them, including those, but many others as well. How about we honor and look after and revere our wonderful farmers who've been so tormented? How about we save our oceans from being fished out? As I said before, let's get the fluoride out of our water, the 1080 that's poisoning us. Let's look at the weather patterns and why they've been so odd. Let's do some research into that. Let's question who our allies are. Let's certainly say no to GE engineered food. Judith Collins coming out already presuming she'll be in power and saying, yes, we'll introduce GE. When was that consulted? Why don't we have a discussion about that? This would be my point. Let's let the rest of the world make that horrendous mistake. And when they realize, as people are realizing around the world now, with the rollout of the WHO Bill Gates Foundation disaster for COVID, where everybody who would take it or had to take it or was forced to take it, took that poison and then got sick. People are realizing what a mistake that was. Well, GE will be the same, but New Zealand, with no shared borders with other countries, we could be the food basket for the world when they realize that their foods have been corrupted by GE, genetically engineered foods. We can keep our stock as pure as we possibly can. So Judith Collins, it's a no. And I'll absolutely debate that with all the research that was done 20 years ago. How about we have a discussion about 5G? If you drive through your towns and cities, look up and see all the towers, all of the cameras. Do you want to be surveilled absolutely everywhere you go? Do you want this sort of transhumanist movement? None of this was discussed. Here's an idea. How about we have media with decent, honorable people who won't, who won't accept payment from the government, who will tell both sides, who will have debates, who will talk up to New Zealanders and assume an intelligence. And if our schooling is right and we teach critical thinking and our universities go back to a much higher standard, not indoctrinating our young, but expecting them to think and critique and debate, we could have the same on our national broadcaster and TV One could become a source of open, absolutely uncensored communication. All of these beautiful visions. Meanwhile, we build communities with community gardens. We have wonderful local food. We could possibly even bypass a lot of what is coming through our supermarket chains with their dictatorial policies. And here's one. How about we completely and elegantly revamp the tax system? There are many other ideas I and others with whom I've spoken have. I will unfold those more fully next week. I won't be doing the, the tearful side. This is the cheerful side, as bad and as bleak as it has been. And the pain that I have felt when I've sat opposite her Kiwis has burnt into me, seared into my soul. But I see a wonderful future for our country, only if we stop the haranguing, the rudeness, and we come together in grace and dignity and humanity. I ask you to support this party. Sign up, put down whatever funds you can. If we don't make the 500, if we don't, and I believe we will, please know that that money will go back into free NZ media and there will be more news breaking stories. I'll put one example of what we've done. The Federation of State Medical Boards was a world news breaker. Doctors around the world had no idea that they were being manipulated by a small group in America. 
that was founded under the Rockefellers. You can have a look at that interview with the wonderful Dr. Bruce Stooley under this. There are many other things you can look at on Rumble. It's the least censored platform, much less censored than YouTube, under Free NZ Media. I have worked with a very loyal band for a very small and loyal band who have done long, long hours. And I have done that work for nearly two years with very little money coming in. I needed to know what I would sacrifice, what I would give for this country. <laughs> and I know what I will give. I will give my all. If you will stand with me, if you will get out and door knock and get people to sign up, if you, this is not me saving you, this is us saving each other together. If you will play your part, my God, I will play mine and I will find the most beautiful, humble, willing to serve Kiwis to stand in this election. The party's name, New Zealand Loyal, the logo NZL. Please sign up and I will talk to you in seven days whether or not we have 500 signatures and are ready to register this party. I believe with all my heart we'll have that. Thank you, New Zealand.